Catholic priests have taken to the streets to protest the killings of Nigerians by Boko Haram terrorists and kidnappers and the response of government to these occurrences. The protesters, all dressed in black, also called on the presidency to speak out, saying its silence on the issue is showing and the breeding seeds of mistrust and incapacitating its defenders. Still with me in the studio, I have Moses Akbasubi. Thank you very much for staying. And of thank course, we have Obi Adjibo. Thank you very much yes, for also you. saying. So they're protesting Catholic bishops this time around. They're saying the protest is on behalf of the over 100 million Christians in the country. What is your reaction? What is your reaction, Moses? Yeah, yeah, the, my reaction is as simple as you can ever imagine because um, it boils down to the fact that our government is still not doing enough when it comes to security. Now, this issue of Boko Haram, to me, is um, compared to the enormous resources we have, we have budgeted in fighting Boko Haram, still we have not yielded any positive results. Now, it has if if the if the, uh, the the Christians Association of Nigeria cannot do this, I wonder who would have done it better, because they felt that yes, this 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 is a war that has been taken to our doorstep, and we should also take it back to the doorstep of the federal government, and that was why this protest was led on Sunday. Was it necessary? Really? Yes, it was necessary because it was necessary because it uh, it appears Christians are the main target now, up north. That is why it is necessary because it's as, it's, it's as if Nigerians are not talking. It looks as if, oh, the Christians who are supposed to be talking are not talking. Let somebody, somebody must speak. No matter how you look at it, somebody must speak. Okay, what do you make of the accusation with you that the presidency is silent about the insecurity in this country? Let's not forget. Bear in mind that the president has meetings on a weekly basis from all indication with the service chiefs, um, we do know that when there is an, um, a situation, he issues a statement via his media aid, or on, on occasions, he goes to the venue and uh, condoles with the people that had become victims. The last time he went, I think he, they said he was booed when he went to condole with those people. Bearing all of mm -hmm. these uh, in, in mind, would you say really that the president has been silent about the insecurity in this country? His utterances sends jitters down my spine. First of all, they, they withdraw everybody's gun, cancel everybody's gun permit. And you now see hoodlums walking around brazenly with AK-47. And then your president, instead of telling you, defend your property, is now telling you, don't fight dialogue and people are killing people, and he's saying don't fight dialogue. You see, the question I have to ask now is, those people that we have saying Jonathan must go, that Jonathan was inept and everything, between Jonathan's time and this time now, which is worse? That's number one. Then number two, he, his body language speaks of somebody who has an I don't care attitude about things. Because if he were caring, he would have released people to set up vigilantes and to, to secure their their. But is he, is he stopping? We have Amotek, we have Shege um, Kepasa, we mm. have some other groups coming up to say they want to have their own outfit. He, he, he also, he, I think the only comment from the federal government is that everything should be done in line with the law. Yes, I know that. But the, remember the, um, the hue and cry about Amotek when it started? That issue of suspicion. This is the time the government should take, it by, take the bull by the horn and tell the house to pass, pass a law as state police. But I'm told that something is being done about that. I don't know how to. But they should accelerate to um, create a state police so that um, it will not solely be a responsibility of federal government now. State will have the responsibility and federal government will have. A, a governor in a state has, it should be in charge of the security of his state. 
Okay. Um, just the other day, we had the controversy about the bill to create uh, um, a center, an agency to rehabilitate uh, repentant Boko Haram um, members. And then these protesters are now saying that the federal government is insensitive to the victims of insurgency and insecurity in this country. Is he insensitive? What more can he do to prove that he is committed not only to the repentant Boko Haram? Mind you, the bill is not from the president, it's from a senator. Yes. I, I, I will say again, with all sense of responsibility, that the sponsor of that bill is not being considerate to Nigerians and fair to Nigerians. Because you, you cannot, <coughs> excuse me, you cannot ask me. It's not just repentant. They are, they are thinking of sending them abroad. Let's have that at the back of our mind. They are thinking of sending them abroad. If that be is clear true, they are thinking of sending them abroad. Now, how will you feel if your father and your mother died as a result of this um, uh, Boko Haram issue, and you now hear tomorrow that most of these repentance, in quotes, Boko Haram are being sent abroad to, for rehabilitation. And after rehabilitation, they are meant to integrate back to the society tomorrow. One, the question you ask yourself is, how genuinely repentant are they? Now, even if they claim they have repented, to what extent? Have they dropped their guns? On whose, on whose financial responsibility will that not be to take care of people who have slaughtered human beings recklessly and carelessly? You want to take them abroad? To, I, I, in fact, I condemn in the strongest terms the sponsor of that bill. I will say again, he's insensitive, he's wicked, and he's not telling Nigerians the truth. What would you say should be the right response from the government when it comes to victims of insurgency? We know that there are IDP camps. Uh, just the other week, um, well, one of our big stories here was the situation, the IDP camp mm -hmm. in Edo State, and we highlighted some of the challenges that they are going through. So what more, in your opinion, can they do to, you know, maybe um, reintegrate these people back to society like they are proposing? Let me, let me bring that question to you, Obi. Um, like they are proposing for uh, the repentant Boko Haram. You see, when you say repentant, it sends um, shivers down my spine. Well, that is the phrase. It's actually repentant Boko Haram members who have indicated an what interest to factors, change. What are the factors change. that determine genuine repentance? Those are issues, those are indices that need to be placed on the tables for us to look at. You see, when somebody is a criminal, it requires... You can't change it, the, the you, can, you right, cannot, yes. It requires a lot of mindset changing. Oh, you live by the gun. No, the gun is not good. Let's take it step at a time. It's not something so that is done. Well, it, that argument seems to be in support of the need for an agency to help rehabilitate no, these people. No, what they want to create. Look, let me tell you what this will, what will the result of this rehabilitation. What it just means is that the soldiers will shoot to kill. They will not hold any prisoners. Because these are the same people that shot at them and they don't know whether these people will identify them and come back for a reprisal. That's the offshoot of it. Okay. Then num number two, rehabilitate who? On what basis? They should be in jail. It's when they've served about 20 years jail term, then you cannot start rehabilitating them. Now you both seem to be in sync mm. on, on that. Mm. So my, my question now is for those that are victims, that are survivors. Those that are victims. Yeah. I saw something that really broke my heart on social media, and I pray it's not true. They showed where the rehabilitated Boko Haram were staying and showed where IDP people were staying, and I really wept for my country. Now, those people in IDP, what are you staying in um, camp for two years? The government is in the government's interest. The first thing the government should do is to make sure they drive away the occupants of your place and then put you back into your place. Okay, let's look at the um, 
one of some of the concerns that was said by the uh, protesters, the Catholic protesters that are asking that the government uh, president speak up and address uh, the people on this issue, uh, they're saying that they're tired of claims by the federal government that the Boko Haram insurgency has been technically uh, defeated because they know that that is untrue, mm -hmm. according to them. So uh, my question is, is it time for the government to find a new refrain, a new um, um, you know, way to express the achievements that they've had. So it is um, uh, politically correct before the people. It's politically wrong. The originator of that word, technically defeated, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information, now has. I thought, I, I, I think, in, in, in fairness to you, he was. Um, he was actually looking for a phrase or words to use. That was why he framed up that was technically defeated. Because the, the people you are referring to as technically defeated, they are killing people day and night. So what is the technicality there? It still baffles me when people still use that word, technically defeated. What, 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 technical, what technicality are you telling Nigerians that people are being killed on a daily basis? What technicalities are you telling us? Okay, the, the, I still don't understand. So they, they, you, 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 you subscribe to the fact that that term should be rested. Should be expunged. As, okay. So let's look at something else, still on this issue, but this time it's a homily by the Archbishop of Abuja, that's um, Ignatius uh, Kaigama. Um, he queried the approach of the federal government uh, to the fight against insurgency. Um, uh, do you um, have concerns with the school of thoughts that says the president is doing everything within his power to address the issue of insecurity? It's just that people don't know all the things that is being done by the presidency to combat um, this um, insurgency and insecurity in the country. So what approach would be better, in your opinion, so that people actually know what the government is doing? First of all, Mr. President, in his own mind, is really trying to work hard. But what is in his mind and what is the reality is miles apart. That's number one. Number two, I told somebody, these people go to the Zambezi forest and they're hiding there. What stops the government from burning down that whole forest? Number. Then number three, we equip our boys, our, our children that are being killed every day. We equip them, give them moral support, make, it, make them happy so that they would, they would be happy to go and fight. Because it's their life, it's not our lives, it's their life. And sometimes I see, I, I see pictures of them in body bags and I really weep because it could be anybody's child. So they, they should give the soldiers a moral booster and then be, not, and be very careful before they send them, before they sentence them to death or court martial them because they are working against the odds. And they now have to turn it around. If, uh, if our boys are, are on top and all the armed forces uh, work together, like if there is an attack, the army will go backed up by the Air Force. We would, we would make, a, we would make a, a much much better impact than we are doing now. Moses, what, what information would be out there for from the government in the fight against uh, insecurity in this country that will assuage your concern that they are actually doing something? What would you love to see to confirm to you that it's beyond rhetoric? Yes, first of all, what I want to see is the attention being given to the IDPs. The IDPs, we hear and learn every day that a lot of budgetary allocation have been allocated to them in taking care of them, but those are in papers and pen. The real, the real thing does not get to the people whom this budget is being uh, allocated to. That is one. Then number two, if you want to fight insurgency, it is not... I just read sometimes two or three days ago that they are thinking of borrowing more funds to equip our, our, our Nigerian military. Uh, to me, to me, by going by the kind of country that I know that we have, is another way to steal. 
because all the ones we have been budgeting, we have never we have never seen a good a good result to just oppose what we have used those monies for. Our president went on international television and was telling CNN who was interviewing him and said that most of the money budgeted for allocation went to private pockets. And it was then asked by Christian Amapol. So the president, you are telling us that Nigerian budgeted this money and they went to private pockets. What have you done to retrieve those money that you think went to private pockets? So to me, I see it as a way of looting the national treasury by telling Nigerians that we want to look, we want to, we want to borrow money to equip our soldiers to. In fact, I was also hearing that they want to have special fund for our military. Okay, um, let, let's, let me, final question uh, to you, Obi. Um, should our religious leaders, as we've seen, be engaged in protesting um, issues like this? Uh, wouldn't, it, wouldn't there be a better approach to communicate their grievances to the presidency other than, I mean, anything can happen when they put themselves out there this way? They've been communicating privately, they've been having meetings, where did it get them? And you must realize that a religion is the opium of the poor, the masses. And if they don't come out for the masses, the masses will feel betrayed. So it is best, once it gets to that stage, there was a time that the GEO took to the streets and we all did a march and whatnot. We are telling them we've had enough. And the more we are doing this, the more they are under pressure, the more they change their strategy to get peace in this country. I guess that's a good place to pause our conversation tonight. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take up plus reports now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Don't go away. It's almost one year after the 2019 general elections and the electoral umpire, Einek, gathers in Lagos to push for a review of the electoral legal framework. The chairman of Einek declares the retreat open. He reiterates the commission's desire to attend to the recommendations of the 2019 Electoral Act Amendment Bill from the Senate Committee on Einek aimed at achieving credible polls ahead of the 2023 elections. The Commission's input is not limited to the review proposed by the National Assembly. As election managers, we conduct elections. We also monitor pre-election activities such as party primaries and handle post-election processes, including the outcome of litigations. Therefore, we must, at this meeting, cast our nets wide by dissecting the Electoral Act in the light of experience and proposing wide-ranging amendments that will give the nation an electoral legal framework that can truly protect the choice of citizens and guarantee free, fair and credible elections. With Ando and Edo elections happening in November 2020, the chairman condemns all forms of electoral violence. For as long as violators of our electoral laws are not penalized, we'll continue to have issues with, the, with our elections. If you take a place like South Africa, for instance, they have what they, what they call the electoral courts. Violators are, are, are arrested and instantly prosecuted. But in our own case, Committee after committee have recommended for the enactment of a law to set up the Electoral Offences Commission and Tribunal. One of the goals of this retreat is the rendezvous and subsequent interactions between INEC and the Senate, which is expected to come up on the 5th of March. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Permit me to reiterate the advice of a former vice president of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, on the issue of coronavirus. He said, and I quote, I strongly counsel, counsel that any tendency to blame and point fingers must be temporarily, if not permanently, suspended. If fingers must be pointed, it must be to solutions. He went on to say that this crisis is an opportunity to show that we are first and foremost Nigerians and that we have no other country but our dear fatherland, which we must work together to keep healthy 
and secure. Now, to add to that, APC, PDP, or any other political party must shield their political swords and rally round the federal government to ensure that we win this. It is my submission that they will be regarded the better for it when the conversations come up again in the future, as they most certainly will in this Nigeria. That said, coronavirus is here with us. We're not out of the woods, not by a long shot. So personal hygiene and vigilance by all, as cautioned, is repeated tonight. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time. Until then, please be well and stay safe.